Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I wanted to share a new update that we added to the, 3, the 3D floor planner that will allow you to wrap uh, trim around any custom structures that you create using the wall editor. So it's really quick and easy to apply trim to a structure. Um, and maybe what I'll do is I'll do the, the quick steps to show you how to apply the trim to the structure. So if you're familiar with using the wall editor, then you can just watch the uh, beginning of this particular video. And if you're not familiar with using the wall editor to create custom structures, once we do that initial step, I'll delete this design and recreate it from scratch. So you can see exactly how you would build it out. So if anyone is familiar with using the wall editor and they want to be able to wrap trim around any custom structures, what you want to do is you want to click on the actual wall. We're going to edit that wall. So we're going to click onto the edit icon here. That's going to bring us into the wall editor. Here you can see I've got the basic structure for my wall. So these two black squares here, these are uh, indicating where the doorways are. So you can design around them. And then you can see that I've added in my paint color and my plaster finish for my fireplace. And I've also included my trim elements. Now, if you have uh, already built out your designs and you just want to be able to wrap trim elements around the structures like this right here, when you click on the fireplace or whatever the custom structure it is that you're creating, Whenever you click on that shape over here in the right side panel down at the bottom, you're going to see that you have the option to include or exclude trim. So basically the uh, first option is crown molding. You're going to see the little tool tips up here and then you've got your baseboard over here. But essentially crown is the top line, the chair rail is the middle line and the baseboard is the bottom line. So if you want to exclude them, just turn them off here and you're going to see them uh, be removed from that overall shape within the wall editor. And if I pull out my 3D preview here, you can see that all of the trim elements have been removed from this structure. If I wanted to add them back in, I'm just going to turn those trim element options back on and then they'll start to appear in your 3D editor as well. So you can see what those shapes are going to look like, whether you include the trim or exclude it. Now, if you want to see how I built this out from scratch, I'm basically, let's just close this down. We'll continue on with this video. I'm going to close out this particular design here. We'll bring us back into the 3D editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all of the custom elements that I added to this wall and we're going to redo it from scratch. So let's go ahead. We'll delete this, clear the settings. I'll get rid of these um, art pieces and fireplace elements. And now we've got a blank wall to work with. So if I want to rebuild that, I'm going to click on the wall. We're going to hit the edit icon here. That's going to bring me into the wall editor. Again, I can see where the doorways are, so I know where to design around them. First thing I would do is apply a paint color to this wall. So if I click into the texture library here, you're going to see there's a paint option. Um, you can go into any of these collections if you like, and you can browse those colors. But I'm actually just going to pop into recents because I already added a paint color to the rest of the walls within this design and any of the colors that I've already used will show up in my recents library. So it's quick and easy for, my, for me to find that exact color or texture again. So now that I've added this paint color in, the next thing that I want to do is I want to build out that fireplace structure. So I'm going to use the shape option right here. I'll click into the rectangular shape and I'm just going to create a rectangular shape that's going to go from the ceiling to the floor in the middle of the wall here. Now, if I want, so let's say I want to have a foot difference uh, between the edge of the fireplace and this door. So what I can do is I can just drag this out until I have it at a foot and I'll do the same thing over here. And then you'll also see the overall uh, width of your fireplace at the top here. So you can just drag the lines in and out and you can make it the exact size that you need. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back to the main texture library here and I'm going to add in a plaster finish. So we'll just take this one right here. And what I need to do now is I need to extrude this shape out. So it's got to sit into the space. We got to give it some depth. So on the right side panel here, you can see that I've got this one selected on the right side panel here at the bottom, there's an extrusion tool. So I'm going to extrude this 18 inches. You're not going to see anything happen in the wall editor, but if I open up the 3D previewer, you can see that this shape has now extruded 18 inches into the space. 
So I've got that set up. So now what I need to do is I need to start adding in my trim elements. So I'll pop over here to the trim library. We've got crown molding, baseboard, and chair rail. And I'll just pop into the crown molding options. I'm just gonna select this one right here, but you can see that there are, let's go back here uh, into the crown molding option. You can see right here that we've got a number of options that you can choose from. I'm then gonna go ahead and I'll just select a baseboard option. You're gonna see it apply onto the wall here and we'll do the same thing for the chair rail. So let's just pick any chair rail here and everything gets added in. Now your trim elements are just gonna look like flat shapes on the wall editor, but in the 3D mode, you'll see that detailed relief. If you want to adjust your chair rail height, just click on your chair rail over here. You're gonna see that you can uh, change the distance from the floor. So let's say we wanna make this 48. And then if I wanted to change up the finish of my chair rail, Anytime I click on any of these options, you're gonna see over here on the right side panel that you have the option to change the trim finish. So if I hover over this, you'll see an edit icon. Click on that, it's gonna bring you into the texture library. I'm gonna go into the wood library and there's a number of different wood textures that you can apply to it. But again, I've already applied a specific wood finish. So I'm gonna go into my recents and I'll select the one that I already used for the rest of the room, just so everything matches up. Now, in this particular case, my wood grain on this, um, this particular texture is running vertically and I don't want it to run vertically. So what I'm gonna do is down here at the bottom of the right side panel, you'll see a rotation tool. So I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees, that texture 90 degrees, so that the wood grain runs horizontally. And that'll look nicer. So then I'm gonna do the same thing for my baseboard and for my crown molding. So we'll start with the baseboard. We're gonna change this up. I'm gonna go into wood. I'm gonna go into my recents. And then here, I'm gonna select the texture that I already added to everything else. And down here on the right side panel, I'm gonna rotate that texture 90 degrees because I want that wood grain to run horizontally. Last one, we're gonna do the crown molding. Come back in here to the uh, trim finish. We're gonna change that up go into the wood options. Again, you can go into the wood texture and you can pick whatever options you want. There's loads to choose from. I'm gonna pop into recents and grab the one that I've already used. And then again, I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. There are certain wood textures in there that are already set at a horizontal uh, wood grain, so you don't have to adjust those ones. It's just for cases where, let me just pop into the wood finish so you can see. So you can see certain ones are running horizontally and other ones are running vertically. If you wanna use one of the ones that's running vertically, just go ahead and change up the texture by uh, changing the rotation here so that you can make the grain run, or the wood grain run in the direction that you like. Now, when I added the trim after I created my structure, you can see that it's already wrapping around this structure. And if I pull out my 3D previewer here, you can see that it's doing the same thing within the 3D previewer. So if I did not want that trim element to, or all of those trim elements to wrap around this structure, all I need to do is select the shape that I created for this fireplace. Over here on the right side panel, I'm gonna come down to the bottom here and I'm going to turn off these options down here to include the trim. And when I do that, you're gonna see that they start to remove from the wall here and also from within your 3D previewer. So now you don't have the trim wrapping around, it's just butting up to the edge. If you want the trim to wrap around, then you can turn these options on. Pretty simple. So definitely pop into your Design Files account, give this new uh, feature a try. It'll give you more, uh, a lot more flexibility when it comes to uh, deciding where you want those trim elements to appear within your design and where you want to exclude them. And of course, if you need any help at all, then just reach out to us on the live chat. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching.